Hello everybody in fishing land. This is going to be a two-part uh, video. My apologies if I uh, appear to have the video cut in spots uh, for some reason was throwing up all night. I haven't had any sleep. I'm severely caffeinated just to be awake right now. Um, yet again had to call into work. I really super super hate doing that but I I was screwed. So, this going to be two parts. The first part is uh, kind of the way I'm leaning for the local ponds here in, in uh, the Phoenix area. Uh, stuff that I'm doing uh, tackle-wise that I've found works for me. And then I'm going to talk about my friend uh, with Juggernaut, uh, Michael Harriman of Juggernaut Custom Jigs. Uh, he is the one that... Um, makes the jig heads themselves, bear hook, uh, raw, uh, lead, start to finish, and then his wife is the one that paints them and finishes them, and they're exceptional quality. First, I have started, because I really don't want to drag my tackle bag every time I go out, so I have a, what I call a micro pack. This I can put in my back pocket, or, uh, you know, I've got a Columbia uh, River multi-pocket shirt I can stick it in there keep my phone on one side keep it on the other so essentially what I have in this is primarily drop shot the main one I have on right now uh, which I was going to use after work is one that's made by a local and a newer friend uh, not for production just uh, personal use he's been kind enough to let me use them um, but I also have uh, leeches in uh, pumpkin brown and uh, black from Berkeley uh, Power Bait. Is uh, this little deal here, and uh, it's got you know this real nice mix of sparkle in it. Um, it's a real good color grain. Uh, I've seen, and he's he mentioned this, but I've seen the color of some of the. Um, crawdads in our waters and they are fairly uh mute like a muted green with some uh some red in them but they're not like you would think most of the time and these have been known to uh, catch multiple species so i'm really really anticipatory as to uh what it can do now for the majority of uh the sizes of things i'm using this number six uh through a one knot on the spin shot are what i'm using uh, the number six to number four have a tendency to be really good for, uh, the fish not really seeing too much more paying attention to the bait. Uh, the one knot, two knots or more for the bigger, uh, four and a half and, f and six inch robo worms for me. I do have some, uh, owner, um, Mo Motu size six is coming in for, uh, traditional, um, uh, swivel up and leader type uh, but typically I don't like to tie them directly to the line I'm gonna start doing that with those particular hooks because they're real thin wire and they're really good for light biters but I'm still not gonna be getting rid of my spin shots literally can run anything I want depending on the sizes I have and get away with it uh, this happens to be before I go off it's only about uh, five six inches the reason for that is I found in the ponds that the fish are holding like almost belly down in the dirt and this guarantees that they're just going to see it. So it's just literally a 1 16th uh, 6 um, spin shot. That's it. So very simple, very easy to use. Uh, this happens to be on the rod that I typically use for my slip auber fishing, but it's a really nice... Uh, Right between ultralight and light. Uh, it's listed as a light, but it's got a really nice parabolic pin and a very fast action tip on it. So it lends itself to being good for crappie jigs, uh, slip bobber, you know, what have you, to where it's seeing the tip uh, flex is really, like, important. Even with slip bobbers, it, it can be, because there are going to be times where you don't see your slip bobber go under because you'll be talking or something, and all of a sudden you see just that little telltale sign with your rod tip. You really never know when you're on the water. So, primary types for the waters that we're in, uh, you know, colors vary for me, but 
I got a lot of greens and a lot of shad colors, but I started getting, and I've had this in a previous video, uh, these Robo Worm slim, the Slimline Shads, but this is in a, uh, I think it's called Aaron's Magic. No, Aaron's Magic is darker, I'm sorry. This is uh, like a rainbow trout color. I don't remember exactly what it's called, but it really kind of imitates uh, like a, a baby rainbow almost. But it still has that shad profile. So it still has that baitfish profile, but it has that color that they're familiar with because they eat those stalker trout, the bigger bass. So that's one of them. I've got that in uh, black top shad. Uh, that's some type of silver shad and Aaron's Magic, which is really dark. And it's actually a really good color for murky water, by the way. And then uh, the Kitek uh, Swing Shot, I think these are called. Swing Tail in a 2-inch. And it's in kind of that almost like uh, sexy shad yellow chartreuse color. Almost translucent. These on a number six or number eight spin shot, they absolutely annihilate these. A uh, couple of things that I do that I really wouldn't recommend personally because if you're spending money on packs of, of uh, Robo Worms, you really don't want to destroy them. But I have found that this Orange Crusher, which is basically that, uh, that type of brown crawdad black into the orange brown, the dat like itself... In the rocks, like on Bartlett, man, the, these kind of things, they just they just get obliterated. Uh, on that side, I have my one-eighth ounce cylinders. I usually typically don't go over one-eighth because I usually don't go uh, into cover with my uh, drop shots. I have, but at that point in time, I have heavier gear. So I've got the one-eighths on the side. Uh, I've got their... Uh, size 10 barrel swivels i get like a 100 pack from uh china for like six bucks it, it varies the prices vary depending on who you're getting them from then on my other side i have like i showed you on the rod already the 116s i don't i don't have any of the tungstens right now i just have the leads uh they were just cheaper you know happens like that sometimes 100 pack of number 8 uh, salmon eggs. Now what I do with these, and I've shown it in another video, is I'll take two in the line uh, anywhere from 8 to 12 inches apart and then a lead to uh, cylinder weight. And what that allows me to do is I can put a couple of, of smaller uh, fathead minnows on and just uh, power in, into, uh, into cover to uh, get them to see an amplification. Like I said on my double-double rig, I showed it in that one actually. Uh, I put two small uh, finesse type drop shot baits on there. I could put two of those uh, Kitex on there if I wanted to. Things of that nature. Um, so I tend to stick with 1 16th and 1 8th. It takes a little bit of a slower fall. Uh, I have a few, you know, number one size on the spin shots. I got a couple number eights in here. I've got one aught and two aught. Um, just enough to get me by if I take a small pack. And sometimes I'll take a bag of worms with me too. Just keep it in one of my other pockets. I just got these in yesterday. Uh, these are two inch and they're kind of a torpedo minnowy type paddle tail. Uh, black into pink. Pretty damn good color. I've got these soaking in uh, this um, BioEdge, the the Shiner potion, which is pretty potent. You know, we've got Shiner. God, that stuff is so potent. Uh, we've got Shiner Amino and Shad all in our waters, but Shiner's a, a smell that they they just recognize as prey. So. Uh, if it's a bait that I'm going to be going uh, and imitating some type of bait fish with, the Shiner, I think, is a little more potent than the Shad or the Minnow. Then I got these. Uh, this big black mesh of uh, <laughs> what, well, what they essentially are is kind of like one of those Shad ones where, excuse me, one of those crappie uh, baits where it's kind of a, a tubby um, jig body and then it goes into the tail with the 
wiggler at the end, the stub. Um, I believe there's like 32 in here. Got same solution. Uh, you know, just imitating like a small leech or, uh, you know, anything that could be a creature reaction strike oriented. I, I have that in that same fluid. I kind of messed around with making my own. I've made some of my own scents. Um, one that I found that worked really good for me for a long time. <clears throat> and I think I'm going to probably make it again. It was one where I took and I pressed my own garlic to get garlic oil. And I took uh, pure star anise oil from India. And this is back when this stuff was like really super expensive and not uh, that popular to use. So I had this big old thing of pure um, Indian anise oil, star anise. Uh, super, super smelly. Super potent. I You couldn't... Unless you were making such bulk that you were making something for like 40 people, you could never bake with the stuff. It was just too powerful. It was really that pure. You had to dilute it down hardcore. So I would mix that with the garlic oil and some uh, Mediterranean rock salt. Uh, the fine gridded, not the, the coarse. And I would heat it up in a Ziploc and take those plastics that I was going to soak in it while it was still steaming hot throw it all in there, shake it around real good, squeeze every single bit of air I could while rotating that, uh, usually a, a quart size Ziploc. Get it rolled up, put it into another quart Ziploc, and air it out again. What I find that that does for me, and, and maybe it's just my mindset, I believe what it does is that when you take the air out of the first one and then retake the air out of the second one, that it kind of compresses it and it pushes that oil and everything absorbs into the plastic. Maybe it's just a peace of mind thing for me. I don't know. It could be possible. But that's kind of um, the stuff I'm doing for the local ponds right now. For instance, some of the really just monstrous size uh, um, hybrid bluegills and, and pure bluegills that they have caught have been out of freestone ponds, both of the sides of them, uh, and warmoth. There are warmoth in there as well in the last... Uh, four years. Uh, it's kind of been fished out to an extent. There were, <coughs> excuse me, there were several uh, families that had been going there for a while uh, over the last uh, two years and had been taking every panfish that they caught. They were taking just standard little red worms and catching tons, of, even the small ones. Coolers full of them. And you know, I'm not one that I I don't like to uh, snitch on people, but I finally got a hold of one of the rangers that had come by and I said, look, you know, this one particular family who I, I liked the guy, the, the uh, father, he was a nice guy, but he just didn't get concepts of the rules. And um, I ended up calling the guy on him. He was there. I said, look, this guy down here, he's got, you know, his, his four kids and his wife, and they're taking every single bluegill they catch and every tilapia they catch, even the baby ones. And I've told them it's against the rules because um, it's a, a 10, uh, 10 limit for bluegill. And uh, he wouldn't listen to that. So I told the Game of Fish guy. Well, then not more than like two weeks later, they caught a Vietnamese family doing the same thing. So, you know, I, I don't know. I, it's gotten fished out a little bit. Um, I know there's still fish in there, but you have to really hunt for them now uh compared to before but i've noticed that those smaller plastics uh sometimes i'll take ones from bass pro that i've gotten in certain colors and i'll uh, cut them down into different shapes and take a lighter and do what's called glassing them over which you know, just kind of uh, clarify them a little bit melt them a little and they were pretty good especially on a, a micro drop shot and it's the same thing as a regular one. You know, you just just a little bit at a time. So it's stuff that works. Uh, experimentation is really key on these waters because these waters, the, the community ones and uh, the salt chain ones especially, they are way, way overfished. And it, it's a fight on a lot of them now. You know, I know people know their little honey holes and they don't want to tell anybody or they take a select few and that's fine. I completely get it. I don't really agree with it, but I get it. 
Um, but as far as I'm concerned, I'm, I've am i got to, to get away from the chain lakes. I need to, to start fishing off the salt chain lakes. I mean, Roosevelt's an exception because it doesn't get hit uh, hard by the blooms like the other ones do. Uh, Bartlett's still exceptional. There's some big fucking panfish in Bartlett, by the way. Uh, there's some rock bass and some warmth that just will knock your damn socks off, and it's not that far away. Uh, horseshoe, all, all stupendously loaded with all sorts of things, including walleye. And there's a fairly decent population of walleye in there, actually, if people don't realize it. So, in there, depending on the water uh, situation, can be a trick loading your boat into it. Sometimes you got to do it from shore, but uh, there's a lot of brush in that lake. And there's a lot of fish in it. Uh, Alamo, Mojave, uh, Picacho, Mitri. These are places that take uh, time to get to, but I have to start doing it. And and I've encouraged my friend Jim to, you know, say, hey, let's go to these places. Maybe we can stay overnight on a Friday and do it Saturday. But we need to get away from these other lakes because they're just stupendously overfished. Roosevelt's a unique uh, kind of status as far as it goes because it's fished fairly uh, frequently by a lot of people, but it's a huge amount of water, and they have structures that they planted all over that lake, uh, huge barrier structures that just hold a ton of fish now. They've done a really good service by doing that, by the way. So anyway, that's my little bit there. Now I'm going to talk about Juggernaut. Uh, you know, I really wish I had my cards laying around for him. I don't know that I see any. Uh, yeah, it is what it is. But um, Juggernaut Custom Jigs. I met him, eh, I think it's maybe been a couple years now. And I have gotten a lot of stuff from him uh, over time now. Now, I like to go really micro. So I have uh, number 10 hooked 164 ball heads for really, really super light work for panfish, okay? And they look like outside of the bag. Literally, little tiny, and they're sickle hook. They are sickle hook. Uh, I got a couple that, you know, I, I put like some type of copper uh, paint job on. Uh, some are darker than others. I experiment a little bit, you know? Uh, experimentation is really just not a bad idea. And then I got the same in 180, number 10 red, right there. And I got uh, a couple of them actually rigged with my ant imitations. And, you know, they really are, like, super tiny. And, you know, just really, really kind of cool. And... Those are just, you know, like a little tiny portion of what he's made. And and because of the fact that I've got these packs, I got like a couple hundred of the green uh, chartreuse. I got pure white like maggots. Uh, I got another company's uh, black ones, the ones you just saw me show you. Uh, I got from China a whole bunch of like little one and a quarter inch crawdad imitations. I mean, I got a lot of stuff in here. Uh... But then, you know, he goes on, like, here's this kind of head wrapped, the nice hair, hair jig, striper. Um, some of the newer ones I got, here's another one, and I think it's like an ounce with a, a really nice size hook, you know. I got another one from him with the um, willow leaf, which that because of how far back it is, that's actually going to spin really good no matter what kind of swim bait I put on it. It's like, really can't wait to put a Kitek paddle tail on this. It would work really good. And then these are some of the newer ones I got, by the way. Then I got one in like a white chartreuse, just a bear. They're really nice. Uh, he makes quality stuff, and him, and him and his wife, they work really close together to get things really, really right. Uh, I have been experimenting with these that he sent just recently. Got some smaller ones. Uh, I got glow jigs with um, size 
sixes, size eights with uh, red eyes. I got them with silver eyes. I mean, I got a really wide variety. I've probably, I've probably got in the neighborhood of maybe, see, between my micro micros and all my other jigs from him, I've probably got about 300, if not more, uh, jig heads by now. And um, it's because I love his product. And in fact, this whole box here basically is uh, dedicated to his, like, uh, one knot hook, one eighth ounce, hand, hand, uh, applied eyes, paint, clear coats, chartreuse, uh, if I can get to it, same thing with more of the gold eyes and, uh, the regular silver, I've got them in, uh, Number twos with keepers, white gold eyes. I mean, I got I got variety coming out of my ears from him. I've got all one thirty two number eights, twenty four number sixes. I I've got a lot of stuff from this man and his wife. And I gotta tell you something. I and it's a subjective opinion uh, uh, to me. I have had jig heads that I bought at the stores that yeah you know they didn't disappoint they did their job uh but unfortunately the quality just wasn't there no matter what the quality with with Michael Harriman's juggernaut jig heads is that it's full quality control from start to finish and there's only two people that are doing it so start to finish, there's only two sets of eyes that ever set eyes. It's not like it's some plant popping them out, you know, 10,000 a day. It's just not that way. And that's what I want with product. I, I buy very few uh, off-the-shelf items if I can help it. So in some tackle, you just kind of have to. But if I can get things custom made, I mean, my friend, you know, had a, a pack of, I think there's at least 40 in that pack. And he's like, here... Just let me know what you think. I'm, pff, hey, tell me that twice, you know. Uh, so, Michael Harriman's uh, company is called Juggernaut Custom Jig Heads. That is uh, J-U-G-G-E-R-N-A-U-T. And the number is 928-551-5555. Five, five, I can just barely make it out. I've marred this thing up so much. He's a complete professional in every way. Him and his wife both. Uh, with him, R&D, and customer service are paramount. Absolute paramount to everything else. What Whatever cost uh, is incurred, whatever it takes to take care of the customer, this is what this man and his wife do. Uh, they have the time to do it, they take the time to do it, and they do it extremely well. So, I get most of my jig heads exclusively through uh, Juggernaut custom jig heads now. I do get um, jig bodies of the typical uh, wave tail variety for uh, crappie, the th uh, two and a half, three inch from... Um, Chow Lee, he uh, he makes really good, uh, uh, really good shake bodies, and I get a variety of um, you know Bass Pro Shop uh, type stuff as well. But I use them all on his jig heads. I do a lot of drop shot though, so I have to split my time. I usually have one rod set up strictly for using the jig heads, and then I have a rod that's exclusively for drop shot. Right now, I'm experimenting with the micro drop shot uh, on the panfish. Unfortunately, with the way I feel right now, um, you know, I, I have an anti nausea medicine, which is the only thing that's keeping me from throwing up right now, unfortunately. So I won't be able to give any kind of report uh, for a while as far as that goes but if you're looking to get uh just really fantastically made quality jig heads you've got to go to juggernaut 
you know, I gave you the, his name. Uh, he's in my uh, friends list. You can always inbox him. Um, Michael Harriman, H-A-R-R-I-A-M-A-N. Or Harriman. Wow, I can't spell today. You know, my vocabulary is really huge for being a redneck, and I really just misspelled it horribly. H-A-R-R-I-M-A-N. Harriman. He's in my friends list. He's on Facebook. I believe there's a Facebook under Juggernaut as well. Very worthwhile man to speak to. Very worthwhile couple to get products through. They guarantee their stuff. If you're not satisfied, they will take care of you. They don't ask questions unless it's directly related to what you want. They will custom make, if they have the molds and the means to buy the hooks and everything else, what you want. And they've done in fact, some of the stuff that's in my box, a lot of the stuff in my box is exactly what I asked for. Not, hey, I have this option. What do you want? And that's a thing that you're not going to get with the store bots. So I would really highly recommend them.